I'm going to tell you 10 PlayStation Vita games that don't usually appear in most top 10 lists. Now, a few of these might appear in a rare gems list, but for the most part, don't get talked about in general. At least not to my knowledge. So if you're in the mood for something other than Killzone Mercenary and Persona 4 Golden, then keep watching. Number 10. Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition I'm betting most of you didn't even know there was a Duke Nukem game on the PS Vita. If I'm correct, I think this game got delisted a few years back. But fortunately for me, I was able to snag a copy before it happened. Actually, to be honest, the only reason I have it is because I think it was given as a free game on PlayStation Plus one month. Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition is the definitive compilation of the landmark first person shooter. Now I have to confess, I'm not the biggest Duke Nukem fan. It came out at a time when I was just getting into console gaming, so I was too busy with my SNES to realize the impact this game had on the industry. But after playing for a little bit, I can definitely see why this game was such a big deal back then. Its crude sense of humor and quick style gameplay was something rarely seen in the mid 90s. It was hip, it was edgy, and it had attitude. And truth be told, some of it still holds up today. It's almost a breath of fresh air to see a game not take itself so seriously for once. Damn, I'm looking good. I'm not too familiar with the original, so I don't know of any key differences, but I can say for sure that the frame rate is excellent. Not only that, there's even a run mode you can activate, which speeds up the game even further. Surprisingly, this doesn't slow down the frame rate at all. There's also a neat map system that allows you to see exactly where you are within the game. Character animations leave a lot to be desired. It's not awful, but it definitely won't blow you away. I guess for the time, it was cool. I can't say I have a newfound love for the franchise, but I will admit, I did have fun playing it. If you're a Duke Nukem fan, Man, this is the game to get. It's no longer available in the PSN store, but I'm sure some of you guys out there will find other means of getting it. Wink, wink. Number 9. Earth Defense Force 2 Invaders from Planet Space You wouldn't believe how many people ask me about this game. And I finally realized why. Because it's one of those love or hate type games. You're either really gonna love it, or you're really gonna hate it. If you love shooting countless monsters in a giant open sandbox, then this is the game for you. If you think that shooting the same enemy types over and over is repetitive, then you're probably gonna hate it. I honestly don't know where I fall. At first I didn't really get it. I'm shooting stuff and I'm waiting for something to happen, but nothing really happens. That's when I realized that that's basically the entire game. It's repetitive, no doubt, but at the same time, there is something strangely addictive about it. You think you've had enough, but somehow end up playing to the very end, or at least to however far you can get without dying. Do I think it's one of the best games I've ever played? No, not by a long shot. But I do think it's impressive at how many objects are on the screen at one time. The frame rate isn't perfect, but it somehow manages to keep up with all the chaos and destruction. That alone is enough for me to give the game some sort of praise. If you happen to enjoy this game, then let me know why in the comments below. I'm curious. Number 8. Super Monkey Ball Banana Splits I've never actually played any of the previous Super Monkey Ball games, but I sort of knew what to expect going into it for the first time. You're basically guiding a monkey that's trapped in a ball down an obstacle course. A simple concept, but intricate in its execution. Like one of those vintage ball in a cup kind of games. You know exactly what you need to do, but actually doing it is rather difficult. Sure, the first few missions are a breeze, but it's the later ones that pose the most challenge, especially when you start getting rid of the guardrails. If you really want to make things harder on yourself, play using the Vita's motion control instead of the left analog stick. The game as a whole is very reminiscent of past Sega arcade games from back in the day. It's loud, colorful, and full of noise. If you're feeling nostalgic for that, then Banana Splits is the way to go. It underperformed commercially on the PS Vita during its initial launch, and as a result was the last entry in the series to be released on a dedicated game console. It's a fun, pick up and play kind of game that doesn't require too much mental preparation. Perfect for those 20 to 30 minute lunch breaks. Number 7. The Walking Dead Season 2 now who needs The Last of Us Part 2 when you've got The Walking Dead Season 2? Talk about emotional storytelling. Five minutes into the first chapter and I already wanted to cry. I don't remember exactly how the first season ended, but judging by the appearance of some of the characters, I'm assuming it's a year or two later. If you're familiar with past Telltale games, you'll know this is basically a giant point and click adventure game. You move around the environment and interact with objects within that space. Dialogue options are given whenever you encounter other characters. Depending on how you respond usually has an effect on how the story unfolds. It's almost like an interactive choose your own adventure really. But it's more than just point and click. There are moments when you'll have to make quick decisions via quick time events. They offer a nice change of pace and help to break up the dialogue. It's not too difficult either since the controls are pretty forgiving. Unfortunately, like most Telltale games, the port to the PS Vita could have been better. The game runs fine for the most part, but quick time events do a number on the frame rate. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't noticeable, but luckily this is one of those games that relies more heavily on its superb storytelling. Number 6. 
The Amazing Spider-Man. Man, talk about a game that makes you feel like Spider-Man. Sure, the graphics have been heavily downgraded and the frame rate sees a few too many drops, but the overall presentation is there. This is, without a doubt, as close to an open-world Spider-Man game as you're gonna get on the PlayStation Vita. In some ways, it sort of resembles Spider-Man on the PS4. There's an ongoing debate on whether the frame rate ruins the game or not, and I have to say, it doesn't. The reason why I'm not so hard on the frame drops in this game is because it really doesn't affect the gameplay, at least when you put it on easy. Unlike games such as Borderlands 2, which I believe require a more consistent than frame rate, the Amazing Spider-Man can get away with a less than stellar one. Why is that, you might ask? Well, because most of the combat is scripted. And I say that in no way to discourage you from picking up this game, but simply to say that the frame drops do not lessen your enjoyment. Trust me on this one. If the frame rate was garbage, I'd tell you. The game overall looks good, if a bit drab. It's missing a lot of the ambient lighting in the console version, but hey, something had to give. Swinging in and out of air ducts is fluid and fighting multiple opponents at once reminds you of the Batman Arkham games, but with a hint of Spider-Man flair. Boss battles look awesome as well. Frame drops do obviously kick in, but looking at what's actually happening on screen, you can't help but be impressed. This game is getting up there in price, and me talking about it isn't gonna make it any better. If you still have your physical copy, hang on to it. Number 5. LEGO Batman 2 DC Superheroes this is actually the second LEGO game I've ever played. The first one was Marvel Super Heroes Universe in Peril for the PS Vita. From my recollection, that one didn't go over very well, so you can imagine my excitement going into this one. I think it was a port of the 3DS version. Fortunately for me, this game is nothing like Universe in Peril. DC Super Heroes is a legit, full-fledged LEGO Batman game. I'm amazed at how much they were able to cram into this PS Vita port. I mean, this game is awesome. So awesome in fact that it's practically teetering on hidden gem status. How come no one ever talks about this game? Characters have wonderfully animated attacks, which is surprising because I wasn't expecting that sort of detail. Environments are big and expansive, allowing for a variety of puzzles and platforming. Cool gadgets and outfits are aplenty, helping to diversify gameplay the further in you go. Boss battles are fun too, each one requiring a little bit of brain power to figure out. I think that's what I like most about DC superheroes. Even though it's a LEGO game, there is a bit of a challenge to it. Oh, and it's also cool to see DC villains in LEGO form as well. Do yourself a favor and grab yourself a copy now while it's still cheap. Cause after you know who catches wind of this, prices will no doubt skyrocket. Number 4. Assassin's Creed Chronicles if you're a fan of the franchise, you definitely have to give this a try. It may not be open world, but it retains everything Assassin's Creed is known for. This is how you properly do a 2.5D game. It was poorly received when it arrived on consoles, but I think that's only because it was never meant to be a console game. Assassin's Creed Chronicles is the perfect game to play on the go. The levels are designed in a way where you go from one point to the next. There is somewhat of a difficulty spike in some areas, especially with Chronicles Russia. Still, if you stick with it, you'll find it's one of the most rewarding action side-scrolling platformers out there. It looks great, it plays great, and plus, you get three games in one. Number 3. Root Letter You know what I love most about this game? The fact that it makes me feel like I'm in Japan. Now, even though I've never actually been there in person, I feel like this is what it would be like if I had. There is something beautiful about Japan that I can't quite explain or even put into words. Something about the environment, the way the roads are built, the way houses look, the way people go about their day, or even the way food is represented. All that can be seen in Root Letter, a stylized visual novel adventure where you're tasked with finding out the whereabouts of a high school girl who's gone missing. She was once a pen pal who you would exchange letters with, but have suddenly disappeared. If you're familiar with visual novels, you know there's a lot of reading involved. More like an interactive book than a game, really. It's less about action and more about discovery through conversation. I know it's a hard sell if you're not used to that kind of game, but it's the kind of game that doesn't require quick finger reflexes. Looking through the environment and asking people for clues is all it takes. Everything has been streamlined. There's not much to do, but that's the nature of visual novels. The satisfaction comes from a compelling story and beautiful artwork. I found the story quite fascinating. Each person I met and each conversation I had would reveal more and more about this mysterious disappearing girl. The music is also very beautiful, calming, soothing, but slightly eerie. If you love watching anime, then give Root Letter a try. If you play nothing but Killzone Mercenary or Call of Duty, I'd advise to stay away. Number 2. Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend I think I just found my new favorite portable fighting game. If you thought Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 looked good on the Vita, then think again. Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend blows everything else out of the water. First off, have you ever seen a fighting game with this many different play options? I mean, good lord, look at all this. I don't even know where to begin. Street Fighter V launched with two play modes, I believe. Training and online multiplayer. Continuum Shift Extend has too many to count. It's almost as if the developers gave us a complete game. 
Since time is of the essence, I jumped right into arcade mode just to get a gist of what this game was all about. Unfortunately, a few hours in and I still feel it's not enough time to express how deep the fighting system is. Button mashing will only get you so far, but the real reward comes when you master the more intricate fighting techniques. What doesn't take time to realize is how beautiful this game looks. Play it on the Vita's OLED screen and you'd swear this was the best looking 2D fighter you've ever laid eyes on. With a wealth of different play options, there's always something to do in this game. Arcade training, and art gallery mode, there's even a story mode. You can also try your luck with online multiplayer or go at it with a friend in ad hoc. I can't think of one mode that's missing from this game. You definitely get your money's worth. Number 1. Ease 8, Lacrimosa of Donna. I'm betting everybody wants to know what I think of this game. Life on the open sea never looked so good on an OLED. Or should I say life on a tropical island getaway. Either way, Lacrimosa of Donna is gorgeous to look at. As soon as the opening intro started, I knew I was going to like this game. It's actually one of the more impressive looking PS Vita titles in my opinion. Colors are bright and saturated, coupled with fine little details that add life to the environments. For example, the wheelbarrow that rolls back and forth as you sail across sea. Or the moonlight that's casted through a window in the crew's cabin. You can clearly clearly tell the people working on this game really cared about the PS Vita. I mean, when was the last time you saw water that looked this good on Sony's little handheld? The cutscenes look great too. I was surprised they didn't look low res or compressed like most cutscenes you see in other Vita games. The music is also extraordinary. A spellbinding soundtrack that has elements of past Final Fantasy games with a touch of that Studio Ghibli magic. Okay, so it looks great and it sounds great, but how does it play? Let's put it this way. If it weren't for the fact that this got ported to the PS4 and Nintendo Switch, Lacomosa of Donna would be the killer app on the PlayStation Vita. I will go so far as to say this is as good, if not better, than Persona 4 Golden. The combat is both familiar and fresh. You're not bogged down by the traditional active time battle system of past JRPGs. Battles are fast, kinetic, and exhilarating. Your attacks just flow so smoothly from one to the next. Switching between different party members are quick, and you always feel like your actions matter. There are very minor frame drops but nothing that diminishes the game's overall enjoyment. The characters are likable, but what I really adore is the whole premise of the story. I mean, who doesn't want to be stranded on a deserted tropical island with a bunch of your friends? It's like that movie with Tom Hanks. What was it? Castaway? If you couldn't get into Persona 4 Golden because of whatever reason, then I highly recommend picking up its alternative, Ease 8 on the PlayStation Vita. It's getting up there in price, so be prepared to spend some money. But believe me, it's worth every penny. If you want to know what other PlayStation Vita games are worth picking up, make sure you click the links on the screen or the ones that are pinned down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.